Hello train friends, welcome back to the Pittsburgh Industrial Railroad and the Horseshoe Curve live episode number 39. How's everybody doing today? Um, today's a bit, been a bit hectic. If you hear all the, the banging and stuff, um, <laughs> we're, we're getting a roof put on today. They're out there doing it right now. So it's awfully loud. Um, and I felt bad. I didn't want to, I didn't want to cancel the show. I kind of wanted to do this. So I made sure those guys are good out there. I told them you got to give me at least an hour. They're, they're fine. <laughs> Trying to get into my, my, uh, my app here. Give me just a moment. All right. Who all do we got here with us so far? Let's see. <laughs> I hope the banging's not too loud. Oh, hang on one second. I'm missing something. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, I had to move the show to, to uh, today because... Um, I'm working tomorrow, and it was just not going to work. I would have had to do this show way, way too late. It would have been running into dinner, so it's just not going to happen. So, um, so that one one weekend a month where I got to move the show to Saturdays. Uh, and again, if uh, if you joined us here, make sure to say hi. Carrie Keen, how you doing? Little whistle for you there. Got Slag Cat. And we got Tommy's, Tommy Fred's trains. And we have Al Jerry. We got Devon. Russell Coons. John 2618. Vincent, how you doing, buddy? Got one for for Randy here coming up. Where's what, oh, it's uh. Old Ohio Angler, Iron Horse Train Reviews, Slag Cat. I think I already got you, Slag Cat. I did. I got you before. <laughs> Tommy Sweargrows, Train Finder Craig. And X Cole 101. James Wilkerson. Biloxi, Mississippi. Cole, how you doing, buddy? And we have Robert Cook. And let's see, I'm trying to get a different engine. Ants Trains. All right, guys, um, so I'm probably going to try to keep the show a little bit shorter than usual, usual just because I got all this, this work going on outside right now. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, we'll still have fun. For sure, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I hope everybody's having a, a good weekend so far. And um, here's some of our PTF Designs building flats. I brought a few down. So I don't know if you guys have seen these before. These are kind of new. These are G-scale. These are outdoor building flats. And they're on a, a plastic board. So these are waterproof. Got the, the Red Man Barn and the... This is the back factory. <clears throat> and then... Um, got a couple others. It's the uh, O-scale gas station. If you've recently ordered from me, um, I'm about I'm about a week back on orders. There, there's going to be a large shipment going out on Tuesday because there's a whole I have a whole bunch of stuff done upstairs. I just I couldn't leave today. Um, here's the uh, the Aero Factory and uh, this is HO scale. Pretty nice. And then the last one here we have the. Um, 
the, the Strasbourg J Tower, O scale. So, pretty cool. Um, there is a light that usually goes on this one here. I did not install it yet on that. So if you're wondering about that. But uh, you can get the uh, the building flats at uh, pghtrainfanatic.com. You can also get shirts like this. Or I have other ones with the train engines on the front at my uh, Teespring store. And um, let's see here. So... I see a question. Are you unboxing a new engine today? I, uh, in fact, I am. I am unboxing a new engine today. <laughs> and uh, if I missed anybody, Wilbur Snyder is here. And Anthony from Ants Trains is here. Uh, Anthony says, "Does anybody have an experience with the Weaver Three Bay?" Cool hoppers with the plastic truck. So I've had a, I don't know if I've had experience with the Weaver um, coal hoppers, but I've had experience with other cars and the plastic trucks are, they're pretty terrible on the Weaver cars to be completely honest with you. Um, so if you, I mean, if you want a decent, a decent truck, uh, plan on buying something that's die cast because they're, they're really wobbly and they're not going to hold up. For, for the long haul. That's just my opinion on it. Um, let's see here. Old Ohio, old Ohio Angler said, Beetlejuice movie was on TV this past week. Watched it just to see the Dante's Inferno building. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I did miss TKP Studios. Thanks, Old Ohio Angler. So, TKP, you get the, uh, the K4 here. Thanks for watching today, guys. Um, any news, MTH news, uh, there's definitely no news from MTH. Um, I don't know if we're really going to get any till the very end, but um, I know that there, I said it last week, there was some auctions that, that happened. So I think there's another one coming up in a couple weeks in a round of, I think there's three, three rounds. Uh, Robert Cook, do you still make the Hobo and Train Store flat? Yes, I do. I just... I just posted that on um, on eBay this past week. I um, it was down for a while because I wanted to redesign it, so I redesigned it, and I made a video of it recently too. So if you missed the video, you can check it out. It's just it's a little bit different, like the wording on the the, the train store. I made it so it's universal across all scales because it used to say O scale, um, like train fanatics or something. So I just called it just train fanatics, and I put some big boys in the window. If, you know, those are always popular. <laughs> So it's on it's on eBay. Check it out. Um, it's soon to be on my website too. I just haven't added it on there yet. Uh, but if I didn't give you a whistle, Robert Cook, there's your whistle. <laughs> Since Trains is here, how you doing, buddy? And let's see here. One eight hundred Clyde. And Human City Junction Heath is here. How you doing, buddy? Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Heath. Hopefully somebody buys the, at least buys the tech, or keeps it going somehow. I know they said they were going to have, um, hopefully some of the employees were going to keep the electronics part of it going, which would be a, a decent, a decent move, hopefully. And let's see here. Anfield Railroad layout in the loft. I said railroad, it's just road. <laughs> And uh, let's see, anybody else have any questions? I'll move along to the next thing here if we're, if we're ready to go to the unboxing because uh, I actually got a couple things to do. Sid says, good, any of you big Pensy fans wait to come watch his live stream tomorrow. Got some big Pensy locomotives around Cole. Yeah, Sid's going to run his, uh, I believe, his live stream usually at the same time when I go on Sundays since I'm not going to be live tomorrow. So good luck to Sid, and I'll try to catch you if I'm at work, sneak in a little bit of time. Shouldn't be too busy at that part, part of the day. <laughs> Derry says, trains and things. You're never too late, buddy. How you doing? It's a little horn for you, a little horn action. All right, so... 
Uh, again, if you just joined us late and you hear a bunch of um, a bunch of banging coming from the <laughs> from in the room, uh, they're doing my roof today. So <laughs> I, uh, I made sure those guys were all good out there. And I'm like, I'm gonna head down to the basement for a little bit. You good? They're like, Yeah, we're good. I'm like, All right. <laughs> Wife thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> All right, so um, I didn't really have any other train news. Um, if you, again, if the, with the building flats, I didn't mention if you want to um, purchase them, you can email me, pghtrainfanatic at yahoo.com. And uh, they're on the website at pghtrainfanatic.com. And on eBay under the username pghtrainfanatic. And it looks like I saw a couple new names. I saw Xcole 101, Jack Burton. See here, we'll give you the uh, CC2 Jack. He says, "Is today Sunday or are you a day early?" I'm a day early. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm working tomorrow, Heath, so I had to do the live show today. Aaron Cassidy is here. How you doing, pal? Here's a little SD SD38 action for you. Oh, oh, let's see. Uh, Tommy Fred says, "What material were used?" It's just a regular tar roof, asphalt. <laughs> Work. I forget what that is. I know. Seriously, sometimes I do too. Russell Coons. I keep trying to get up. John. John Raydell. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Little horn action for you. Russell says he likes the new railroad crossing. Yeah, I do too. It's pretty awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, so um, I'm going to move into the... I, I put the boxes in the um, other room. Shingles. I, I looked into metal roofs, and it was just... Um, didn't really didn't really like what the options I had, so I went, we just went with a standard shingle roof. So they're up there hammering away at it right now. All right, so I, I apologize for the mess in here. So let's see... If I can get the uh, the camera angle down a little bit lower here, it's super high right now. Oh, that should work, I guess. All right, so give me just one second here. I gotta grab my. My knife to open it. No lightsaber this time, guys. Okay, I had to grab my my iPad too here so I can see what you guys are saying to me. If you have any questions. gonna go like this there we go all right so probably what I'm just gonna do is probably just stand I guess because I don't know if I can sit in here how high this camera is all right so we'll go with the uh, we'll go with the big box first so it's a pretty big box here See which end is a good end to open this on. It says open on this end, but it looks like this end might be already. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it really matters to be honest. This is some strong tape. What do you guys think this is? Anybody have any guesses? Let's see, any guesses? Hmm. 
one eight hundred clients. Just look at all those keystones. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of keystones up there. <laughs> All right, so any any guesses? Any guesses? A new Pensy logo, maybe. So a bit of a trick, bit of a trickery with this box because an awfully large box for for that. You can see it. But I believe there's something at the bottom of it, maybe. Leave that back here for a minute. Let me get rid of all this paper. All right. So it says S, an S3. <laughs> I was jealous of your S3. What I really, I'll tell you what I really want again is I want a, um, a Pensy S2 turbine. I, I sold my turbine a while, a while back and I kind of want another one. If anybody sees a legacy S2 turbine, let me know. Uh, Sid says a new FM. That's a pretty good guess. That's definitely been on my mind lately. Uh, Algeri says Lion Chief Plus 2.0 Big Boy. That'd be a nice engine. That'd be awfully nice. <laughs> so it doesn't look like anybody's guessed it yet. So I guess we're going to have to just figure out what it is. Okay. Yeah, you guys are probably hoping for a steamer, but this definitely is not a steamer, not in this, uh, this small of a box. So, if you can see what that is or not, looks like Norfolk Southern to me. Is it Norfolk Southern? I don't know. Let's take it out and see. That's the uh, Penn Central U-boat. Pretty sweet. Let's remove this out of here. So I kind of always wanted to get a, a, a legacy U-boat again. I had a Conrail one a while back. And... Um, these new ones have really ridiculously good horns for that matches up well with with uh, with this engine. So this is pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. So this is a legacy. It does have the Bluetooth in it. So we're gonna have to program that into the layout. Uh oh, looks like there's a little piece here. What's this from? Anybody recognize what that's for? I'm not sure what this is. It looks like some kind of like a an iron. Let's see here. Let's see if I can see where that goes. That's kind of strange. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Well, this handrail, handrail in the back is really loose. It's actually almost coming off. So I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. 
That looks like that's going to have to be glued eventually. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I'll just hold on to it and figure out what it is later on, I guess. Old Ohio Angler said he saw Penn Central on the flap of the box. Is that cheating? <laughs> Sid says RJ is definitely jealous right now. Does RJ want one of these? So this came from actually from Max Railroad. Max sold me this. This was his. Now we got to see what else is in the box over there. U-boat's all packed up. Box is good. Okay, so here's the next item. Next item up for opening is nice Penn Central caboose. It's a Lionel smoking caboose. It's um, this is item number six eight one eight zero eight. The engine, if you're wondering, this is item number 84292 with the, that six dash in front of it. Sorry, I forgot to say that part. Um, the U-boats are good for 031 curves. And this, this is the uh, N5B caboose. I believe it does smoke from what I've... I think you told me. Ants Tran says he bets the smaller box is the caboose. And you were right. <laughs> um, Ants said, how, how well do the smoking cabooses smoke? They actually smoke pretty well, considering. Um, I mean, it's nothing like an engine, of course. That would look weird, but it's just a nice little whisper of smoke that'll come out and this one has the detachable smokestack right there so something's moving around in there I'm not sure what it is or if it's just the trucks anyways here's the here's the caboose nice shot of it eastern region perfect And then uh, it's got the nice lanterns on the back. I think the door is probably open up on this. Yeah, the door is even open up, see? That's sick. And uh, we'll get this little, little thingy open here. This is the smokestack. So that seems to be pretty good there. And yeah, so on the bottom it does say here, smoke on off. I'm actually gonna turn it off. I'm not gonna run the smoke in this. And it does have a switch for the lighting as well. All right, so there's those two items. And we still got one more box to go. See if I stop and I answer some questions here real quick. Tommy Fred's train says honey likes cabooses. Cool. That's uh, I I have an awful lot of cabooses actually. Um, Heath said I will be back before you hold the giveaway for the Conroe Heritage set, but I have to go take care of some things. <laughs> All right, Heath. <laughs> we'll see if that happens or not. And uh, let's see. Al Jerry says, is the giveaway only for USA? So that is a really great question. So I would say if, if you're, if I'm probably gonna have to make that a roll. I, I don't know right now, but 
I would have to say if you're outside the U.S. or if you're in Canada or, or Alaska or Hawaii, something like that, you, I'm probably going to ask if we can like split shipping fees or something because especially if it's some massive set, it's going to be awfully hard to um, you know, send something that far and, and it not cost an arm and a leg. Uh, not to mention, I'm going to be giving away more than one thing. So, and and Heath keeps talking about the Conrail set. It's not going to be the Conrail set, guys. Don't don't get your hopes up on the Conrail set. But it'll be. It's going to be a, a train set for sure. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Gus Hadley, the lunatic from Arno, says, uh, "Hey Nick, did you get in on the Cabin Fever auction?" Of the MTH showroom, yeah, I did get in on that. I did not pick up anything from it though. I was um, I was watching a few things that I kind of had my eyes on, and and I threw a bid at it, and then I got out bid, and I was like, forget it. So I just let it go. It was with the with the pr premium and shipping costs. Plus, they said they were charging sales tax the PA residents. I, I was I was out at that point, so uh, nothing was like that important to me. But there are more, another round coming up of it. Um, Otis Tolley's here from, uh, f saying hi from Princeton, West Virginia. How you doing, Belle? Anthony, Anth's Trains says, when are you doing the giveaway? So I'm doing the giveaway at 10,000 subs. And right now I'm at um, like 9,330 something. So we need to get about like 650 more subs on the channel. And then I'm doing the giveaway at 1,000. So... I may I may do an announcement before I hit ten thousand, um, like a video announcement saying like you know ten thousand subscriber giveaway. Help me get to that point. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Type of deal. So um, that may be coming in the near future as well. Um, another thing, the um, uh, the the Barry series should be starting pretty soon. Uh, the adventures with Barry. Um, I've I had to pick up a few items. And props for that for that series. So I'm waiting for those to come, and then I have to do some some thinking and video editing. So we'll we'll see how that goes. All right. So let's move these aside just a bit. We are going to run that today. I'm pretty stoked to run it. All right. So I got one more one more brown box here. Any any stabs of what this is? Sure, it'll come as no surprise. Let's see what you guys are saying. Anthony says he can't wait for the series regarding the uh, adventures with Barry. <laughs> So this is um, a pretty unique I item that I found here that I thought was at least pretty unique in my eyes. Something you don't see too often. So you can see it's in a Rail King box. So put this over here. All right, so this is a Penn Central tank car. And it's uh, it's a pretty neat one because it's uniquely painted. It's something you don't see too often. I started looking at Penn Central rolling stock. I figured oh, maybe I'll pick up an, a piece of rolling stock to go with this new engine. And um, this one just kind of caught my eye. It was this was on eBay? I got this on eBay. It's colorful. It's a little breaks up the the color in the in the train. So this thing's pretty nice, and uh, it's Rail King, and these are I'm pretty sure this is a, like either a semi scale or scale. Let's see what it says here. It just says Penn Central Modern Tank Car. This is item number three zero dash seven three three zero one. So I haven't seen too many of these around on on uh, people's layouts or anything like that. So or in train stores. So I thought that was pretty nice. So I grabbed that on eBay. So we got a nice little Penn Central train going here. This is actually my only Penn Central engine right now. I had, I did have a couple other Penn Central engines in the past. I had 
the um, the uh, SD70 ACE Heritage. I think I'm trying to think if I had the I think I had the MTH one and the Lionel one. Come to think of it, I think I I went crazy on the the MTH Heritage engines when they came out. I bought like the the Pensy, the Conrail, and the the Pen, Pen Central. I bought all three of them. And then the, the Lionel Heritage units were coming out, I think about like nine months later. And once those came out, I was kind of on board with the Lionel ones and ended up trading in, trading in the MTH Premier versions for those. So anyways, here's a, another look at what, what came in the mail for this weekend. Penn Central U-Boat, it's a U33C Rail King tank car and the Lionel Caboose. So I'm gonna work on getting these on the layout over here. Let's see. Maybe we'll take the caboose first, something easy to carry since I'm gonna carry the camera with me. And um, a little shot of some of the locomotives on the shelves. That... So, like I said, just ignore my mess in here, guys. It's, it's, it's messy. So let me uh, let's see, we'll angle the camera like this here. So right now, I just turned off the power so we can track everything up here. So um, this is a an Atlas O uh, double door box car. Really nice, really nice box car. It's probably my favorite Penn Central item that I have, other than maybe the you know the engine and stuff. Now um, you can see the the coloration is a little different on everything. So there's what Atlas uses for their Penn Central green and Lionel's is a bit more, I would say, darker, different shade. MTH tends to go with this like kind of like dull, dull green here. I threw these these on here just because they um, they kind of broke up the the color scheme a bit. Oh, that's backwards. And then I threw this this. Uh, MTH Rail King High Q box car on here too. That's bridging the gap. Figured this the it was fitting for the Conrail or not the Conrail, <laughs> the Penn Central engine because it kind of bridged the gap in my collection with having a lot of Pennsylvania stuff and Conrail stuff, and I didn't have a a, a Penn Central engine. So and it has all the the, the logos here: Norfolk Southern, Penn Central, Conrail, and Pensy. Um, Let's see, where, where should we put the uh, the tank car? Put it in here or toward the back? You guys let me know in the comments section. Give me one second, I'm gonna go grab it. I'm gonna grab the engine. So, Nathan Rita, how you doing, pal? Somebody says up front. And we'll, we'll do it right there between the box car. That's a good idea. I saw somebody, somebody call me said that. So we're, like I said, we're gonna have to program this in my remote. So it's probably gonna end up being either 65 or 47. I wait and see what's in my remote already. And your run program switches are right under there. Let me move my um, 
my building flats here. They're on, they were ha sitting in the river. <laughs> Give me one second, we're gonna disconnect this microphone. I don't need this anymore. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for again for everybody who's watching right now. I appreciate all the views and, and likes. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm trying to to get to that ten thousand mark so we can do that big giveaway. Alright, so this engine is uh, ready to be programmed now. And so if anybody's not familiar with how to do that in a, in a legacy remote, uh, you can just come in here and you, you press your engine button and we'll try to just make this 65. So, oh, I can't make it 65. My, my nickel plate roads 765 is 65. So we're gonna have to make it 47. So we'll just press this again. Four, seven, nothing's programmed there. Hit our set button. And we just flip the switch into run. All right, so we're pretty much good to go there. Here's a quick taste of the bell and the horn. So it looks like I need to I need to back it up because it's right now it's in it's still in uh, TMCC mode. So it'll go over my sensor track right there, and you'll see it'll load all the information in here. We'll watch it live. <laughs> Didn't work. Should have loaded it in there. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So now it's in legacy mode. So you can see we can quill the horn. It's a pretty cool horn. And um, and then also for today, since we're running. Penn Central and it's the um, kind of bridging the gap. I figure we'll do a little bit of everything. So we got got our new Penn Central train, and then um, for our it's running mate on the outer loop. We have the Penn CK4 with some passenger cars, and then over here we have the Norfolk Southern ballast and uh, coal train or not not coal. It's um, Coke hoppers. <laughs> Actually, this would be considered limestone. It's for more for the steel mill. And then over in the yard, we have something we can pull out here that I got set up. Whoop. The uh, Conrail SD, SD70 Mac. I uh, put some nice colorful cars with it there. So we'll uh, have a little bit of everything today. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, let's 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 get the K4 started up here since it's it's in the way. It's got it's got to be moved a bit. Hang on, just a second. And again, you guys can ask questions while I run the trains. 
and I'll try to answer everybody. If I miss something and, and you ask me a question, just ask it again. I'll try to catch it again. Old Ohio Angler says he's still at the Cab 1 base. Legacy. Legacy is a good upgrade if you do get around to it. It's, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> Clyde. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for letting us into your basement. Looks like a mad scientist workshop lab. <laughs> yeah, there's stuff everywhere in there. It needs cleaned up. I actually bought, I bought some, um, some plastic con Tupperware containers to start organizing everything. Gus Hadley says Penn Central looks way to home on my railroad. Thanks, buddy. All right, let's get the K4 started up. So this is a, um, this engine here is the uh, SD70M. This is not the new one. There was a new SD70M that was released within the past year, I believe. And this one is not the new one. This one's from, I would say like 2014 or something like that. get our, our pen central move and we'll leave the NS in a nice little crawl like that. It looks pretty good for our inner loop. All right, first time running the uh, Penn Central U boat. Got that nice directional lighting. comes the K4 already. <laughs> kind of went around a little faster than I expected.
sorry, I didn't mean to move so fast. <laughs> Pretty good looking little Penn Central train. So I saw somebody saying um, Atlas makes New York Central, no piece, no, no Penn Central O scale RS1. That's kind of a bummer. I actually used to have a, a Penn Central RS11. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a lot of whack right now with the trains and the speed right now. Try to go over to the horseshoe curve and check it out over there. Chasing the uh, the K four right now. give myself a little break and sit down here. <laughs> Yeah, Clyde, the, the, um, so this, the, the RS 11, you're talking about the legacy seven, six Oh five. I actually owned that engine. I never made a video of it for YouTube. Um, if you happen to catch my, my ad and that they gave me in classic toy trains, there's actually a picture of that engine in that, 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 um, that issue. And Gus Hadley asked if uh, the coal hoppers behind the uh, the Penn Central engine are Burwind, and they are the Burwind cars. So one of those cars came in my in each of my my coal hauler sets. One was the M1A coal hauler, and the other one was the the H10 coal hauler set. I'm addicted to this horn. Hey, Brian Rock, Ralph fan, thanks for watching today. T 
TKP says that's one of the coolest horns I've heard on Lionel Diesel. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's and it's definitely fitting for for a U-boat. So I think it's pretty awesome. I've actually heard horns like that on on Norfolk Southern engines that come through our valley here recently. I'm not sure which engines they, they, that was on, but I think one was on like a Dash 9 or da an old Dash 8. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. I saw it, Tommy, you said that something about. Uh, I could make a lash up and run the engines with separate separate cars distance apart. I, I mean, you could technically do that, but uh, you'd be turning off the headlights on one of the engines because it would be considered... Uh-oh. Something stopped. But yeah, it would, it would turn off the headlights on there. Hang on one second, guys. I'm, something's going on with the layout. I think it's the K. I think the K4 just stopped. Is what I think happened. Yeah, the um, the K4 it had issues with that one switch over there in the past, so that could be why it stopped. Maybe we'll move, we'll move and get it a little bit of a different angle now. We'll catch the um, the U-boat coming through the tunnel over here. Maybe we'll head back over to the, to the main room. Okay, if you guys have any questions or or uh, concerns, <laughs> no, slide cat. It wasn't a train wreck. Actually, maybe what we'll do is we'll stay here for a second. I want to see if this K four goes over this switch okay again. For some reason, it it it, it stalls out on that switch we're looking at right now, occasionally. Tommy says he likes the shot through the tunnel. Maybe we'll get a different shot here. We'll go get one a little bit lower like this. See if that thing makes it through there without stalling this time. If it does, we might have to switch directions with that with the with the trains because the K4 it, before it wasn't wasn't doing that going the other direction. See how the light flickered there for a second. Up. 
Okay, let's try a different view now. What do you guys want to see? You name it. Viewer's choice. Uh, or 1-800-Clyde says, what's the most lifelike O-scale people and what company makes them? So I would say I would say it's an even tie between Woodland Scenics and – actually, I take that back. Not Woodland Scenics. I'll tell you who makes makes really good figures is the ones we're looking at right here. Some of these um, – the ones that you can get at Scenic Express, the um, – I, I forget what they're called – I think they call some of them like the Chihuligans and stuff. <laughs> but these are some of them right here. These come from Scenic Express. And they're very detailed. Like, just everything about them. Um, like, the hillbilly wedding scene is from Scenic Express. That guy over there with the musket. Um, they make really good figures. And... Another company that makes really good figures is Art Artista. It's A R T T I S T A. And then also the Woodland Scenics. Like this is a Woodland Scenic scene. Get a get a, a little bit further shot back of the bridge here. Real Toy Train says, where is the scene? <laughs> so the scene, I think, is this one over here. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Not this one. I was just trying to get the engine going past the curve. Here's the the scene right here. Yeah, that scene just that turned out so good. And then it's it's kind of cool how you can you can pan over to the left and you can see like almost like like the mountains off in the distance. The only thing that the only thing is my uh, my semaphore is not working. I think one of the wires came loose on it. Let's see if it works here. No, it's not working. It's infrared censored. So well, we'll check that out. I have to get in there and figure out what wire is loose in it. Here's a good shot of the cabin. Randy likes the hobo tower. We'll get the hobo tower working for you, Randy. It's a pretty cool scene. A lot, lot going on in a little area there. I still need to get something for right here. So I just haven't figured out what that's going to be yet. I think it's going to be a moon shining scene right there. This rock's going to have to come out. Probably put some more scenery up going up the rocks here. Kind of blend it all in. and There's some moon shiners right there. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Kind of goes with the hobo theme. <laughs> 
little moonshine distillery. <laughs> Every time I go up to the horseshoe curve and there's a there's an engine coming past, you know, you're waiting for them to like give you a nice honk. And the, and the ones that go past and do that, are, I always like laugh at and I'm like, really, that's it? And they just come by and they give you a little toot toot. And I'm like, come on, man, give me more than that. <laughs> These trains are actually getting pretty close together. Okay, why did you stop? Don't stop. Let's head over back to the uh, the main room. Sorry if I missed any questions. That somebody said, uh, Otis totally said, if you put moonshine in, you need a little streams. Got to have fresh water, some fresh mountain water. Yeah, there's I, th there is some fresh mountain water over here. Maybe we could do it over here somewhere. Be kind of funny. You can see there's like little little water puddles I made. And there's actually a, uh oh, something happened in the other room. We got a train wreck. And anyway, there's a little little spring of water running out of there. All right, let's let's go figure out what's happening over here. Something happened. What is it? Oh, that's not good. The caboose is back there in front of the K4. That's going to be a bit tough to get. Give me a second, guys. See what happened? I don't know why, just the caboose came off. That's not going to work. I thought maybe I could turn the power off and turn it back on and push it down. Oh, man. Check this out. This is a great idea. Lightsaber. Okay, well, it worked. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I used the force. Uh, Craig, why don't you tell everybody while I'm while I'm fixing this the the setup here what what's going on with the uh, the MTH layout? That'd be be a good time for that. Uh, Thomas, you asked if uh, if Lionel still has the swinging bell. So there's only a few engines that have a swinging bell. Um, there was the the Vision Line CC2, which I have. I have the Vision or the um, there was a Vision Line the the. ATSF 3000 had a swinging bell, 
and the H10 has a swinging bell, and I think there was a Hudson, there was, yeah, there was a Hudson that had a swinging bell, and if there's something else that has a swinging bell, somebody throw it in there. I think those, those four are the only engines that ever got the swinging bell. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing with this is just so we don't have this, this uh, happen again. I'm gonna throw a little zip tie on this so that we don't keep having this caboose come loose on us, because obviously there's a bit of an issue with this coupler. So this should fix the problem. So what are we, what are we talking about, guys? What's, what's happening right now? What's Craig telling you about? Columbia. Yeah, you were telling me about the layout, how you got it. Yeah, just start having to tell them what you're having to do to get it out of there. I just figured out what's what's jingling around in this caboose. These two windows popped out right here. So there's no glass here. The glass fell down inside. I'm going to have to open it up and glue them back in. That's actually happened with a few of my cars. They don't glue these things in very well. I can tell you that right now. If you ever if you ever pick pick up these cars, don't try not to grab it like this. Try to grab it from the bottom or just be careful where you put your your fingers at because you you put a finger on, on one of these these pieces of glass, they pop right in real easily. It's an easy fix, but you know, just it's it's avoidable is what I'm trying to say. Alright, so everything's back in working order now. Let's get this uh this show on the road here. I'm probably going to go for, you know, a little bit longer. I'm not going to go super long here because, like I said, I have some workers here. I don't want to be gone too long. But I just wanted to get the – do the unboxing and kind of have fun with this. We'll also get the the the, uh, the Conrail SD, uh, SD70 Mac out here. So yeah, Craig was telling me about how how this uh, the MTH layout's like solid as a rock. Basically, you're you're gonna have to get it all cut up to get it out of there. Pretty much the only option to get it out is to either cut it up or disassemble it. Uh, Kerry Keen, so you asked if the H10 smoke system needs to be turned on. Actually, this is the K4 I'm running. The K4 is, um, the, the smoke is off on it right now. The smoke's off on all the engines right now. I just, I don't run the smoke for, for hours on end. It's, it's too much and my wife's allergic to it, so if I run the smoke, it's for very short amounts of time for making videos and stuff. So it's gonna get a little little bit dicey here because I'm gonna pull the the SD70 Mac out as well.
guys are going to see here, it's, it's, it's going to get a little bit crazy here in a minute. Oh, so I saw Craig said that MTH has to be out of the factory by December 31st. Wow. That's really soon, considering. Otis says I should pick a spot on the layout and with scenery and teenagers trying to stop a train by putting grease on the track. That's funny. That, that, that's a good idea. That's just a, that's the little two. If you just give it a little. Sorry guys, I was trying to answer a couple quick text messages here. All right. So we got 45 watching right now, 34 likes. Remember to hit the like button guys, I appreciate it. Helps uh, get the channel more recognized and the videos and stuff. This K4 is like really close to the to the SD70 Mac. Everybody always seems to like this shot. Kind of right back here. What I'm wondering is if if how's MTH going to deliver things after they they're out of the warehouse? I guess they're going to be delivering it from a different location. Uh, thanks, Robert. I appreciate you uh, subscribing to the channel and giving a like. Uh, it's very nice of you. Randy says, uh, it's a shame with MTH. He loves Premier Rolling Stock. 90% of yours are MTH. Yeah, I have a lot of MTH Rolling Stock as well. So... Stuff's gonna start to to uh, hold its value and go up and on eBay and stuff like that. So secondhand market. 
not a bad idea if you if you see some cheap MTH stuff to grab it. So guys, I'm probably going to be live here for about another, I would say, 10 minutes or so. Just because I, I'd like to get back up and make sure everything's going okay with, uh, with the work at the house here. So the, uh, the Penn Central U-boat is pretty awesome. There's too much going on with this with this Conrail train out on the main line, so I'm just gonna park it. <laughs> Everything's like really close together. I always forget to turn on the trolley. That's one of those things I always forget to do. <laughs> so, train finder Craig was telling me there's a lot of uh, prototypes underneath the layout. Some old old MTH prototypes, bonus items. Cool. See if we can do like a notch eight on the U-boat. Kind of a cool shot.
So what do you guys think about maybe in one of the live shows, I'll do a how to make a, uh, a fire like this. be kind of cool something easy <laughs> how to make a fire <laughs> Thanks, Gus. I appreciate that, buddy. So maybe what we'll do is... Um, We'll catch the uh, the U-boat over at the Horseshoe Curve one last time, and then we'll uh, we'll end it over there. Thank everybody for watching today. If you have any last questions or or uh, or comments, you can drop it in there. Sorry that I had to kind of cut the video short here. I didn't want to be down here too long. I mean, even even still, it's we're at you know 82 minutes right now. Pretty close to an hour and a half. This shot right here, we'll get the U-boat coming out of the tunnel. right over to here a nice nice slow stop guys so again thanks for watching today hope you enjoyed the uh, unboxing of the new Penn Central U-boat pretty cool so good luck to, uh, to everybody running their trains good luck to Craig with the uh, the MTH layout it's a pretty neat engine I think there Tommy it's something something pretty cool a little different so 
All right, guys, uh, let's see here. Here, we'll, we'll shut it down. Forgot to shut it off. <laughs> That's a pretty cool sound. I didn't even touch anything. It did that automatically. It like went back down to like idle one. Clunky sounding. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you. Um, should be next Sunday at 3 p.m. It'll be fine for that day. If uh, for some reason something comes up, I'm sure I'll let you know. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.